on iHeartRadio. Well, it's been a very interesting um, discussion point here at News Talk. It's been indeed across the country. Whether you like it or not, many people have been discussing this controversial documentary, uh, Leaving Netherlands, uh, which tells the story of these men who claim to be sexually abused by Michael Jackson. But one award-winning British journalist says we need to look at this documentary with a more critical eye before wholeheartedly believing the claims. Uh, This is the opinion of journalist Charles Thompson. Now, Charles has won accolades as an investigative journalist, a crime reporter, a feature writer. His stories have been picked up by many respected international publications. Now, Charles is perhaps best known for his work on Michael Jackson, which has been referred to in several top biographies of the star. Here's 2010 Huffington Post article, one of the most shameful episodes in journalistic history, uh, exposed the media's shoddy coverage of Jackson's 2005 trial. Now, that won praise from several figures involved, including Jackson's lawyer. And Charles is with me now. Good morning and thanks so much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. Charles, first off, uh, you have major issues with the international media and the way it has covered this documentary. What are they? Well, the issues are twofold. There are issues with the documentary itself and there are issues with the way it's being covered by the media and those issues are the same. So the director of this documentary uh, freely admits that He made no effort whatsoever to investigate these two men's allegations. He simply interviewed them, took their stories at face value, and then committed them to film and released them to the public. And the media is now accepting those interviews again at face value and is uh, assuming them to be true and is making no effort to investigate the veracity of the allegations, which is particularly shoddy uh, when you consider that Most of the evidence which undermines these allegations is already in the public domain. Uh, These men, which the film doesn't even mention, have been suing Michael Jackson's estate since 2013 for hundreds of millions of dollars. And and the extensive litigation since 2013, and the case is still going on now, has generated thousands of pages of court documents, um, uh, deposition transcripts, witness statements, disclosure, motions, etc., judgments. And that litany of uh, paperwork, it includes so many contradictions. Their stories are constantly changing. Their stories are contradictory. They contradict their own prior versions of events. And one of them was actually caught lying under oath so brazenly that the judge ruled that no rational juror could believe his story. Now, for the, the media doesn't even have to investigate in order to present this other side of the story because the documents are all public record uh, and they're all freely available on the Internet already and they're being shared far and wide by Michael Jackson's fans. His fans are not afraid of these documents. They share them openly because they so catastrophically undermine these men's allegations. And for the media to completely ignore these documents and point blank refuse to report on their contents is shameful. Uh, I'm not saying the media should all be jumping up and down and saying Michael Jackson is being framed, Mm. but they should at least be presenting both sides of the story. And any journalist who is writing about this documentary without first obtaining and reading through these documents and, and making some attempt to get the other side is, in my opinion simply not a journalist. They're, they're a, a fraud. Have you seen the documentary yourself, Charles? No, uh, I've not seen the documentary. It just aired here uh, a couple of days ago. I have it recorded, but um, I've been uh, reading the documents for the last six years, so I know the well, case yeah. pretty yeah. much inside out. For those perhaps unaware, when you talk about the lack of journalism integrity, what you're essentially saying is... If these two men, accusers, appeared on the likes of, uh, you know, 60 Minutes or a 2020-type current affairs program, their background would come into question because that's what journalism is. So do you believe it's wrong for the media to be calling this a documentary, a shocking documentary? Everywhere I look, it's a shocking documentary. And it is shocking, but perhaps for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah shockingly unethical. Um, you know, for the director to freely admit that he didn't even attempt to investigate or scrutinize these men's allegations is 
outrageous. It's unbelievably unethical. And the other thing he didn't do was give anybody any right of reply. Uh, so Jackson's estate was given no right of reply. And when the uh, filmmaker was questioned about that in one interview, he said, well, I didn't feel I needed to because I included Michael Jackson's own denials from his lifetime. Well, these two men accused him posthumously. Michael Jackson could not possibly have answered their allegations because he was dead by the time they made them. And the only people who were in a position to refute those allegations properly were the people that had been litigating them for the last six years, and they were given no opportunity to do so. Had they been given the opportunity, they would have been able to say, well, hang on a minute, are you aware that one of these men was caught lying under oath and the judge said no jury could believe his version of events? Um, they were prevented from making any argument in uh, response to these men's allegations. The other people who the director didn't go to for a response are the other named boys who these men say were groomed to replace them. Uh, specifically, they say that two boys, uh, Brett Barnes and Macaulay Culkin, were groomed to replace them. Um, and these allegations were not put to Brett Barnes or Macaulay Culkin. They were given no prior warning that they were going to be included in the film. Uh, Brett Barnes in particular has been absolutely uh, distraught as a result of this documentary. He absolutely refutes that Michael Jackson ever abused him in any way. And he's now had for more than a month tabloid journalists com constantly harassing him. He's got people on the internet sending him abusive messages saying you're covering up for a child molester and he's now considering suing hbo and for the filmmaker to have included this material and given the guy no no opportunity to reply and effectively ruined his life is outrageous it's completely unethical and especially for a filmmaker who's doing the media rounds and in every interview he's doing is saying that this film is supposed to be helping victims uh, if he believes that Brett Barnes is a victim, then why is he treating him so shoddily? Uh, so yeah. it's, it's unethical on so many levels. Charles, do you also worry, too, that we're living in an era where my truth is the truth regardless? And in some ways, it's it's been a good thing with the Me Too movement. I don't think anybody would doubt that's been a bad thing. It's been a good thing. But I think anybody who wants to criticise the likes of this documentary may be fearful of doing so because they may be seen as victim-blaming. I wondered what your thoughts are on that because that's the next um, issue I think I can see from some already saying that if you speak out about this documentary as being uh, not very, in, you know, lacking in t integrity, then you're seen as a victim-blamer. That's absolutely a problem. And, and the Me Too movement is very complex. You know, it started off with some fantastic investigative journalism, uh, years-long investigations by the likes of Ronan Farrow, which ended up winning Pulitzer Prizes. Um, but what it descended into very quickly was just anybody that wanted to jump on the bandwagon, finding somebody to make an allegation, and then publishing it. And uh, I did an interview the other day where I was talking about Me Too, and I was saying that, you know, the, the thing is, for every Harvey Weinstein, there's an Ed Westwick. Uh, if you know the story of Ed Westwick, he's a, a, an actor that used to be in Gossip Girl. Uh, he's now in a British show called White Gold. And he was accused very publicly by somebody on Twitter. It was quickly picked up by the media. There was a massive campaign where people were demanding that he be fired from his jobs. Um, as a result of that campaign, he was sacked from a BBC period drama that he'd already filmed. And they did uh, a little bit like they did with Kevin Spacey in the other film, where they, they reshot the whole thing to put a different actor in the role. Um, his series, White Gold, ended up being put on hold for a year. The police investigated these allegations and found there was no merit to them, and he was completely cleared. Uh, in the meantime, his career had been almost destroyed, and his life had been in limbo um, for a year. And that's the problem with the Me Too movement, is that if you're going to do it properly and you're going to conduct a very forensic, thorough, uh, ethical investigation and, and gather hard evidence and then present that hard evidence, then that's great journalism. But if you're just going to find somebody to make an allegation and then splurge it out there with no supporting evidence because you want to ride the movement, then that's terrible journalism and you can destroy lives. Um, and there is a, a backlash now against anybody who is 
uh, questioning these accusers is being accused of uh, victim blaming. There's a journalist in the UK called Louis Theroux, who's a very famous journalist, and he yeah. tweeted the other day that anybody who defends Michael Jackson is a paedophile apologist and is uh, is attacking victims. Well, I mean, that's a, a disgraceful thing to say, and especially for a journalist. You know, a journal, the whole job of a journalist is to interrogate allegations, obtain evidence, scrutinize the evidence, and present the best available version of the truth. It's not to record somebody making an allegation and then broadcast it without making any attempt to investigate whether it's true. And if anybody who does their due diligence on these two accusers and actually goes and looks into the court files and looks into their backgrounds will find... There are a lot of problems here. Both of these men are proven liars. Both of these men are proven perjurers. They've both previously testified under oath that Michael Jackson was innocent, and now they're testifying under oath that Michael Jackson was guilty. Uh, and it doesn't matter which version of that story you personally want to believe. Whichever version it is, you have to accept that one of those stories was a lie. And that means they're perjurers. And so for a journalist to take the word of two perjurers and broadcast it without making any effort to uh, interrogate or investigate what they're saying is despicable, is appalling journalism. And now the whole media is jumping on the bandwagon. And um, there, there are very few voices out there who are saying, well, hang on a minute, where's the evidence? And the very first question that an ethical journalist should be asking is where's the evidence? And probably 1% of journalists are asking that question right now. The only prominent journalist in the UK who's asking that question is Piers Morgan. Yeah. Um, I mean, nobody else is asking the question. It's the first question a journalist should ask. And it just, it shames, I just find it so embarrassing and shameful because um, the, the other thing that you're seeing on social media is uh, a huge divide between younger people and older people. Younger people are not buying this at all. And the reason is they've grown up in an age where they don't really engage with traditional media. Uh, younger people don't buy newspapers. They don't buy magazines. They don't even really watch scheduled TV anymore. They uh, watch Netflix or yeah. Amazon Prime. Everything's on demand. And so the media doesn't have a hold over young people. And younger people are more tech savvy as well. So they're more capable of doing their own research. Yeah. So you're seeing a massive divide on social media between young people and older people, where the younger people are saying, well, hang on a minute, what about this? Hang on a minute, what about that? Because they're going on Google, they're going on Reddit, they're doing their own research, they're finding these court documents, and they're noticing that there are massive problems with these allegations. And so what the media is effectively doing is self-sabotaging. Any, any chance that these young people might have invested in or trusted them they're flushing it down the toilet right now. They're alienating the people that they need to bring on board to survive. And so it makes even less sense when you look at it from that perspective. It's almost like a, a suicide mission. You're right about that because I think that the conversation I feel like I'm having with you this morning, Charles, is not one of whether Michael Jackson is guilty or innocent or, or whatever the case might be. It's not even whether uh, the interviewees um, are to be believed or not. It's the fundamental principles of journalism that did not take place in this documentary. And I think, as you've said before, it's the copy and paste journalism that we see now across the globe where Michael Jackson is assumed to be guilty based on the copy and paste journalism which wouldn't have happened, say, 30 years ago. Yeah, and the other thing is that you're watching them peddling this completely fake narrative uh, where it's all about, you know, the, the debate rages about Michael Jackson's legacy. And, it, and it's like, the, it's like who, the, who's the ba debate between? You're just all debating between yourselves, just this very small microcosm of white, middle, upper-class journalists. <laughs> all having a debate between yourselves. If you go on social media, there, there isn't really a debate raging. Every opinion poll on the internet, Michael Jackson's winning. Fox News, which is a very right-wing news station in America, is running a poll saying, should Michael Jackson's Cirque du Soleil show in Las Vegas be cancelled as a result of this documentary? Uh, the last time I looked, it was on about 90% in favor of, no, it shouldn't. Uh, in Britain, the, our version of The View, called Loose Women, did a similar poll. 
came out about 85% in Michael Jackson's favor. You look at every poll that's running on the Internet, and he's winning it. His approval ratings now are higher than they were after the trial in 2005. And yet the media is peddling this kind of fantasy narrative of Michael Jackson being canceled. You know, the, the people are outraged. It's time to mute his music from our radio stations. The public is not behind it at all. And it's, again, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing watching the media. You can almost see the eyes bulging and the veins popping as they're straining so hard to peddle this narrative that we're powerful, we've brought this man down, we've still got it. They've not still got it. They're dying, and it's an embarrassment. And if they've got any sense, they'll just drop it because it's just making them look ridiculous. Do you think the one good thing, Charles, to come from this documentary and the publicity and the news that's come out of it is perhaps we are now, like you and I, having a conversation about the merits of journalism and where, in this case, it's gone wrong? So is there anything good that's come from this, do you think, this documentary? Um, <clears throat> I think it would be great if that debate was happening on a larger scale, but unfortunately most of the media is not engaging in that debate. All the media en masse is doing is uh, pushing these allegations out there and also propping them up with completely fictitious stories. There was a, a story in The Sun, which is Britain's biggest tabloid, uh, just yesterday, about some FBI files, the story was completely and utterly fictitious, absolutely fictitious. Not only that, it was a fictitious story that was first published nine years ago. Um, so, again, just an embarrassment. I mean, if we could push this debate out and have a, a, a proper debate internationally, nationally and internationally, about journalism and, and why it's dying and why sort of uh, ridiculous stunts like this don't put it in a good light, then that would be great. But I don't think that's a, journal, uh, a debate that most journalists want to have. I think they just want to uh, sort of hide under the covers. Quite possibly so. I really appreciated your time uh, this morning, Charles. I came across you uh, by chance on Twitter last night here in New Zealand and really appreciate you fronting up on our programme at short notice. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for inviting me. Award-winning investigative journalist live for us this morning, Charles Thompson.